This is the Made for Living Well podcast, hosted by Alexa Sherm, the place to create a life well lived. Welcome back to the Made for Living Well podcast. As always, this is the place where I believe you were made for living well. Now, I must say, I did take a very unexpected break that I did not see coming in any way, shape, or form, and thus why there hasn't been a podcast for a brief moment. Now, I do realize I did promise you that we would get into macronutrients. And honestly, I think that topic alone is part of the reason why I took an unexpected break. I really got in my head about things, and today I want to share more about where I am and what I'm thinking and how I'm moving forward. But with that said, as always, my name's Alexa, and I am so grateful that you are here and that you have continued to stick with me throughout this entire journey. And what I hope from this podcast is that you will start to understand that your body is not against you, but it is for you, and really start to see health as something that is inside of you. Now, I know that sounds crazy considering everyone else is sharing a different message. Now, I've really been convicted a lot lately about getting bolder in my message and really starting to share some things that maybe I haven't shared before or starting to present them in maybe a slightly more controversial way. And I only say controversial because it's against the norm. But I really think that's where we have to move if we want to get healthy. And we also have to see that it's in all of us. It's not just one part of our life. So in the coming weeks and months, I'm going to shift the narrative a little bit here. I'm going to maybe shake things up. And I hope that you'll stick around because I think you're really going to find a value from this podcast. Now, over on the blog, I happen to share my daily rhythm that I've developed over the course of learning these new disciplines that we're going to talk about inside this show, and really how I have transformed from undoing the things that haven't been working and redoing them in a way that is working. So you can find all of that at thelivingwell.com. While you're there, don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. It's called The Weekly Fill, where I share a more real-life, realistic picture of what is actually going on. And if you haven't followed along there, I was sharing more about why I was taking an unexpected break from the podcast, which you can dig into by joining The Weekly Fill. You'll get all the previous newsletters that I posted in one easy, one-stop shop. So make sure you sign up there. But today on the podcast... I wanted to end my quote-unquote unexpected, unplanned sabbatical that in years past I would never have called a sabbatical or a break in any way, shape, or form, Um, but I'm really trying to create a new perspective by this and really come to you with the honest reality of my life. I think there's a lot of misconceptions when we see people in the online space or we even see nutritionists or health professionals that maybe they have it all figured out. And while my pride would like me to make you believe that, yes, I know everything and life is going abundantly well, I must say that I still struggle, sometimes it feels like greatly, with some health battles that I have in my own life. And some of the things are things that I've talked to you about, I've created plans about, and yet I still struggle, (laughs) which adds another layer to the problem that I exist within that makes me feel like I'm a hypocrite. On top of maybe not knowing all the answers, of struggling with health in myself, and even nutrition changes, I also then feel like a hypocrite, which just accentuates my problems. (laughs) Now, I really don't want to sound like I'm complaining. What I am trying to show you is that we are all a work in progress. Every single human, no matter what the world tells you, we do not have health completely figured out. We know ideas, we can set foundations, we know paths of movement that really do provide a healthy base for our body. And I'm going to talk about some of those in the disciplines that I've created in my life. However, all humans always have room for growth. There is no arriving in health. Maybe in the sense of just being able to live it out daily, like you are healthy when you can just take the necessary action. 
but I think it's unrealistic and even irresponsible for one to tell you that you are going to get to a place where you are free of all existing problems. Whether that is your relationship with food or whether your indulgences and cravings or getting to a place where you're literally at a healthy weight forever. Life is seasonal. It's always changing. And thus, it requires us to continually move with it. That's why I fully believe health must be defined as a movement, an action. It's something you do in the daily. And that doesn't mean that life is always going to be sunshines and rainbows. It's not going to be perfect all of the time. But it's when you get into those imperfect places, when you come upon the struggles of life that you can start to to really go back to those disciplines that you've established and use those, knowing those things help you to stay grounded and help you to move forward and help you really to rebalance your body to get back to that state of thriving. So I say all that maybe to make myself not feel so bad for what I'm about to tell you, but I know I shouldn't feel bad because this is the existence of humanity. Again, we are always going to, in some way, shape, or form, go through periods of life where health is just hard. And I feel like this summer, I went through a little season of that. I really came into the summer with great expectations. I started the Nourish 30 Challenge. Things were going really well. And I really did develop a lot of discipline from that. But in the process of that, I did have this unspoken expectation (laughs) that I think so many of us live with when we start something new and we really go all in and we really just surrender our life to the process of getting well. And the results maybe just don't happen in the way that you think they should. And that's really what happened to me this summer. I mean, there's a multitude of things that maybe I can't even express into words, but I can tell you the last month, I really started to struggle with the opposite of what I thought I was going to experience this summer. I really started to feel heavy. I started to feel inflamed. I started to feel bloated. I had no energy. I was really kind of back into a little bit of a response of what happened when I got sick so many years ago. And I got terrified. I mean, I was also really angry at myself, at my body, All the things I've taught you not to do, I really had moments of just being like, I don't understand. And what is this all for? And what is wrong with me? So I want to be relatable there to say like, I really did have those moments of like, I don't understand. And it felt really hard to feel like I had done so many of the right things And even from the right motivations, and yet my body didn't seem to be responding in the way that I expected it to. And so after a brief pity party, which probably lasted longer than it should, and really kind of, um, I think, starting to fall back into the place of self-hate in a way, I started to evaluate things. Like I started to take a step outside and think like, okay, I have the power to heal inside of me. How my body chooses to heal is ultimately not up to me. And I think that's what's really frustrating and unexpected in the world of health is that sometimes your body's going to do things that don't make sense to you, but make sense in the greater whole of your health and of your life and of your longevity. And also with that, I think comes the realization that we're not always capable of healing ourselves without external support. And I don't want that to sound backwards from what I've taught you because it's really not. To say that your body knows how to heal, but healing sometimes needs more support in certain seasons. And sometimes that means going to outside resources to really help your internal body. What I mean by that is I started to question, maybe something's wrong with my thyroid. Like maybe I'm having hormonal issues. I don't know the results of that yet. I did schedule a meeting with a practitioner to really help me identify, am I missing something? Like what is an external source of something my body clearly needs? I've started changing my supplements and doing all these things that really I don't want to bore you with. But just to bring the honest reality that 
I think on some level, humans just struggle sometimes and the body just needs more support sometimes. And maybe I'm completely missing it because I expected a certain outcome when really all of the work that I did to get healthy is paying off. It's just doing it in a way that I can't understand, but if I stick with it, will one day understand. So I want to give myself grace because there are so many good tools and disciplines that I've implemented that have made me feel really good. And I have to say that even though I experienced that for a month or a little bit more, that I really have worked to just kind of rebalance myself and give my body space and my life more margin to just take a deep breath. So when it comes to like, what am I struggling with right now? I, I really have struggled this summer with a little bit of weight gain, with exhaustion, with kind of feeling burnt out, sluggish, which is ironic because I feel like I've been working the opposite of that way. And I do think that that has mattered. I think that my body is responding this way as a result of deeper healing that's maybe happening since it's only been six months since we like tore out the mold in our house and redid it. I'm also over the 35 age mark, you know, which is a big milestone in a woman's body of transitioning into a new hormonal pattern that I haven't given myself grace for, or maybe even believe that I'm there yet. I also played around with a lot of food introductions again, or reintroductions, like getting more into sourdough bread, which included gluten, something that I had given up for a long period of my life. Over seven or eight years, I had been gluten-free. And I do think that upon further evaluation, that that is playing a bigger role in why my body feels the way that it does. And so just being able to say like, okay, I think that we can and should be able to reintroduce foods, but maybe right now in this season, the what I have done is just not good for me. The dairy reintroduction went really well, so I just assumed everything would, but for whatever reason, my body feels reactive to that. And then of course, I've struggled with feeling bad about myself and also feeling stuck which I've come to assume is just an illusion because I am taking so many steps to move forward and I just stay consistent in it and change my or rearrange my view of it, I can really start to see that this is a season and it might be part of healing. Like I know sometimes the way of healing or the path of true health looks like two steps backwards before it becomes five steps forward. And so we have to stick on the path. It's just different when you're existing within it rather than watching someone else live it, right? Like it is harder when you're going through it yourself. And I really do want to sympathize and empathize with that because I feel that and I have felt that this summer. But with all of that being said, I still have to come back to the principles and the foundations that we've established here especially amongst the the latest podcasts, health school, and all the ones that came before that, is that your body, my body was made to heal. It knows how to heal. And as long as I'm supplying the support, it will do that. Sometimes, again, that just means like humbling yourself to be like, I need to go to an outside source to help me see what I'm not seeing. Or I need to go to an outside source to help hold me accountable to actually nourish my body well. And sometimes that means I need to throw away the plan and the system and just get back into what does my body need and to the self-awareness to know what is it that is going to help me heal. With that said, I did, upon further evaluation of my life, start to recognize that while there are plenty of things that I would love to change and things that I've struggled with, We cannot get so lost there. Like we cannot stop at the problems because as long as we focus on the problems, they will continuously exist. I can tell you that the more that I emphasized how I was feeling with my weight and feeling insecure, the more insecure I became and really the heavier I felt. Like that did nothing to help solve my problems. It only accentuated my pity party. So needless to say, I did go back to, okay, I have to reevaluate. Like I cannot be here. I do not want to be here. I know this is maybe normal human behavior. And while it's okay to go through periods where you're not okay, I don't think it's okay to stay there. 
And I think that's really the key in all of life. It's not about not going to the hard places or not experiencing the hard things or not having moments where your body is sick or tired or burnout, but it's really getting to the place where like, it's okay that you might be there, but we cannot stay there. And that is the really the work that I've done and the work that I hope that you are doing. This is the work that matters. And, and for me, those became the wins that really started to overshadow the things that I'd struggled with. And some of those wins, again, are just creating that new perspective on healing. Like understanding that healing isn't linear, it's not perfect, and it doesn't always make sense to our logic. Just like why cutting calories doesn't work, even though it seems really logical that if you consume less than you burn, you should lose weight, right? You'll burn fat. Logic says that that makes perfect sense, but reality says that rarely works, and it's because we don't always understand or see or even comprehend at the cellular level what our body is doing to heal. And so we have to give our body grace and also trust it on some level that it is doing best with what it has, and as long as we're providing the right basis and foundation, it has plenty of tools and resources to thrive. And it will thrive in the process of getting well. So I have a new perspective on healing, which just says like, we've got to stick with it. We've got to build consistency and we've got to see the good, even though we're going through hard things. Now, with that being said, I also read a really interesting book that started to transform, or maybe I I don't want to say transform. I really had a good understanding of like hard things are really good for our body, And this season of maybe hard is really good for my own personal growth. But I read an interesting book that I don't know that I fully agree with, but I think it's good to expand our horizons and see outside the common box. It was called Bad Therapy. I'm going to break it down in a later podcast, probably newsletter episode. I think it's worth reading for sure. Even though, again, I don't fully agree with everything that she says. But with that being said, she did make this big overriding statement, not to give a spoiler alert, but the idea is that we are creating a weakness in humanity. Like we are coddling ourselves and we are creating such safe environments that our body doesn't respond well to anything that might be a threat, even if it's not really a threat. Like basically we're weak, we are overly sensitive, and we really live and exist as victims. Now I'm paraphrasing. She didn't exactly say it like that. But essentially she's saying like the more that we talk about our trauma and the more that we fixate on our trauma and the more that we fixate on our pain and our problems, the weaker that we become. Like it really doesn't have the value in healing that we think it does. Now again, right or wrong, we could argue that all day long, but I do think it opens up a valid point of like our goal should not to be rehashing problems and really trying to create this comfy sort of life. That might sound ideal, again, logical, but our body and our mind and our longevity and our life and our well-being doesn't actually go with logic very well. God is outside of logic, and he is the maker of all of us. So I think that explains that pretty well. But really, what the goal of health and life should be is to create a sense of resiliency, to recognize that life is going to bring with it hard things. And it's what we choose to do with those hard things that is going to determine how we grow through them, whether they break us or they make us. And we have to stop living so focused in our problems, really being victim of our problems, because then we'll never escape them. And inside bad therapy, I mean, she really goes hard into stating and proving how we've done that how we have taken problems and created problems that really didn't even exist. We're living in the bad and the hard. And in the process of that, it's so overwhelming that we have no other choice but to self-protect. And self-protect often comes in the form of isolation, which is the exact opposite of what it means to live. We were created for interdependence, even dependence on a greater God. Like we were made to exist in a relationship with all of life. And the more threatened we are and the more problems that we self-create, the less likely we are to ever do that. 
And while you might be like, how does that relate to my health? Like, where is she going with this? What I'm trying to say is we create a lot of problems inside the health space. We create a lot of problems inside of our own bodies. Like I might be trying to pass blame on my thyroid for why I feel the way that I do when really maybe I feel the way that I do because of the mindset perspective that I had been living with it. Maybe because of the negativity that had been circling through my life. Maybe because of the doubt and the lack of intimacy that I'd been living in. I don't exactly know. I don't know that for sure. But what I do know is regardless of whether it is truly a problem, the more that I sit within that problem, the less likely I am to actually do anything about it. Now, yes, we might need external medicine. I might need thyroid meds. I don't know. But what I do know is there are things that I can do today to move forward, today to expand my horizons, today to live my life, and today to create a healthier version of myself. And when I start putting more focus onto that and recognizing that there's a consistency to it, it's not going to happen in a perfect linear line like our logic wants us to believe, but just knowing that If I'm doing the things, my body has the ability to heal and to be well and to fully live life. And honestly, engaging in hard things is exactly the way to build that resiliency, which means it's okay for me to sit in the place of not feeling great about how I look. It's okay for me to recognize that health is going to be hard. It's okay for me to not want to do things and still do them regardless. It's good for me to do hard things. In fact, it's what my body craves. It doesn't crave the big cushy life where all things are perfect. As much as we'd like us to believe that's true, it's not. It only creates more stress and overwhelm, which is exactly the reason I got sucked up into so much insecurity. So it really comes back to changing perspective, which is something that has gone well for me over the last month of just taking the tools that I had in the past, the knowledge that I've, I've gained from understanding our mindset loops and our patterns and how to change those, which I'll link some of those tools up in the show notes. That brings me to the second thing that's going well is being gentler with yourself, which sounds kind of counterintuitive to doing hard things. But I think, again, it's the balance of those things. It's recognizing that building a big cushy life is not what's best for us, but it's also recognizing that in the process of doing hard things, that's going to come with struggle. And in the struggle, it's okay to give yourself grace. It's okay to recognize that it's not going to be perfect. And it's okay sometimes to slow down and just take a break. And that's what I had to do. That's what I had to do in response of being gentle with myself. And if we're completely honest, I think in this world, being gentle with yourself is kind of hard. (laughs) Truly being gentle is not what we assume being gentle is. It's not necessarily giving in to what you feel like, but it's recognizing what is good for you and being gentle in the process of doing those things. It's recognizing the hard is going to be hard. It's going to be a struggle and you don't have to beat yourself up with that, but that you can be gentle in the process of doing the hard. Gentleness is not a weakness and it's not being passive. It really is a strength that requires some level of self-control. Again, to recognize that you can do the hard, but you can give yourself grace and rest through the hard. Like you can love yourself in the process of doing hard things. That is what you were made for. So this summer, I really have worked on that gentleness towards myself and that gentleness towards my body that is extinct and the normal health practices that most of us live for. Right? Like if we're just living for an external solution, it's really hard to be gentle with ourselves because we rarely see what we want to see when we want to see it. But this process has required a lot of gentleness to say like, okay, my body is clearly doing what it knows is best and what it needs right now. And I need to be gentle with myself in the process of just continuing forward. And that brings me to the third thing that's been going well, which is living more in my feminine state. Now, 
I know this can sound really woo-woo and really out there. There's a lot of biblical basis for this, and really it is a true gift to our design to allow us the ability to live it out. And I say that because our feminine, or if you're male, your masculine, is really that power state. It's the strength within you. And while we all have both masculine and feminine sides of us, male and female, females have a stronger feminine side, males tend to have a stronger masculine side, and this is, again, really for our good. And I've done a lot of research, and obviously I've done a few podcasts on this, but one thing that really started to make me think in a broader sense was a recent podcast that I listened to with Lisa Brev. And she is releasing a book called The Fight for Female, which is nothing like what it sounds like and everything what it needs to be. And um, really, it's just talking about the God-given feminine side of us and how powerful that part of our body and our existence is. And like health, it's not necessarily an arrival, but it's a state of existence. And I can tell you, I have lived in my masculine state for far too long, really believing that the feminine side is the weaker side, and I did not want to be weak, nor did I want to be a doormat. And I pushed back so hard in this in different areas in my marriage, within the church, So many areas where I really believed that if I owned that part of me, then I would lose my voice and I would lose my power and I would lose really my means of existence. Like I would lose purpose in life. And so I feared this part of me rather than owning it and recognizing it for the strength that it is. Now, I'm going to do some more podcasts on this feminine side because I think it is really important to understand I'll link up some of the previous shows that I've done. This has been a process of learning and understanding this while breaking down some of my previous hurts and quote unquote traumas that I really wanted to live within. I really had lived so long in the victimhood that I couldn't experience the power of just existing in the gift of my feminine side, which is really this strength. It's this creativity. It's the part of me that connects and can be intimate. It's powerful. It really, truly is powerful. And I've learned it's one of the greatest assets to nourishing my body because the feminine is that nourishing, nurturing side of us that also expands in creativity. So it's allowed me to take certain tasks that felt like tasks and turn them into this art, this art of creating nourishing meals for my body and this art of moving my body in a way that feels good and the art of um, being in connection and intimacy in different relationships. It's really changed my view of so many things and it softened me to see the interconnectedness of all of life rather than just health and the black and white. It's like allowed me to see outside of myself essentially which is a great place to be because the more that we focus on ourselves, the more problems we're going to see and the more likely we are to enter into that victim side of ourselves. And that victim side does nothing good for us. And the last thing that has gone really well that I really want to give myself credit for is building healthy disciplines. Again, the word discipline, I used to have a lot of resistance to And I think it's because I'd lived and understood discipline in the unhealthy form, more like punishment. And that's not what discipline is at all. Discipline really is the loving action, the guiding force that just helps you to continue taking steps and moving forward on the path that is actually going to expand your life. It's going to keep you on the straight and narrow, similar to boundaries. It is there to help you. Disciplines, to me, are similar to our rhythms of life, and I think our disciplines are what create our rhythms or what help change those rhythms or patterns that exist within our life. An unhealthy pattern might be oversleeping in the morning, which might be a result of not going to bed on time or not getting deep sleep, and out of that, it can quickly become a pattern. Now, one of the best ways to break a pattern is with a new pattern that must be created through a new discipline. So if you have a pattern that you don't like, the best way to overcome that is to get disciplined in an area that is going to help nourish that part of you. 
So like if you're not sleeping well or going to bed, then you create disciplines around your bed structure. This is the idea with disciplines, that it's not a punishment or something you feel like you have to do, but something that helps remind you of what you should be doing or need to be doing in order to live your best self. I like the idea of disciplines. I think we need to talk more about it and really change our understanding of it because disciplines can quickly become something that you beat yourself up with. That's not it at all. Again, it's not a punishment, but it is something that has created a foundation that when I start to waver, it can really reground me. (laughs) Like it can really help me and hold me in a place of moving forward in health, even when life feels really overwhelming or I start to feel really unhealthy. Even when my body struggles, this is what can help ground me and bring me back into balance. And so I've worked hard the last few years on developing healthy disciplines, but especially so in this last year, that's why I created that Nourish 30 Challenge was to help you also create healthy disciplines. And so While I was struggling with the insecurities and feeling like my body was maybe moving in the opposite direction I thought it should have been, one thing that really helped me and one thing that's going well is just going back and kind of clinging to those disciplines in my life. It's like the ultimate balancer that I know I can go back to that's going to help me get back on track and in time provide the life and the health that I really want to exist within. Now, I was going to give you my list of five healthy disciplines that have really changed my relationship with Peyton, my relationship with God, my relationship with myself, but I realized we're pushing 35 minutes in the podcast that I promised would be shorter episodes of 30 minutes. So we are going to split this podcast into two, and in the next podcast, I am going to share those healthy disciplines that have truly made so much difference in my life. Because while I might have struggled and I might continue to struggle, the reality is, is I don't have to stay there and I won't, partially because I have so many healthy disciplines in place to keep moving me forward. And so much of life and what we want to achieve in life is not necessarily based on setting and achieving goals, but it's built out of healthy disciplines. It's showing up and doing the things day in and day out because you know in time they will pay off. And even if you can't see it, just like I couldn't see it for moments this summer where I felt really defeated, I knew that if I continued on with the disciplines, those were the things that would really fill me and those are the things that are really nourishing me and in many ways are the very things that are creating health even if I can't see it. Because what I know to be true more than what I might see, is that I am really healthier than I've been in a long time. And I say that because so much of my mind and my soul has changed this summer for the better. Like so much healing has happened in those other places that are feeding and fueling my body and my biology in more powerful ways than anything I eat or how I move. Those things matter, don't get me wrong, and I think they matter more than maybe I've even let you believe here. We are gonna break those down and talk about those because I have set a discipline of walking more, and man, let me tell you, I have noticed so many benefits from that. I crave it, and I can tell when I haven't done it. The physical side of us matters, but so does the health of our mind and our soul. And I think one benefit that I found is balancing the disciplines so they're not just so focused on one aspect of your whole, as in just your body or just your mind, but there are disciplines that involve all three. And that has been really foundational because I really believe the health of you is only as healthy as the whole of you. Like meaning you can't just have a healthy soul and not a healthy mind and body. Like they all three must rise together. And when one is unhealthy, Arguably, I think we need to evaluate all three. Now, again, these are topics for another day. I'm going long, but I want you to come back next week because we're going to break down disciplines and I'm going to share those five disciplines in the next podcast that have truly been a game changer for me and help me pull me out of those really deep, dark, hard days. 
And so, yes, sometimes I still want to look in the mirror and think, wow, you are definitely not where I thought I would be. Sometimes I want to beat myself up and sometimes I want to compare. And even if I do those for a brief moment, the thing that gets me out is going back to, but what I know to be true and how can I take action and what I know to be true are those healthy disciplines that I've established. So I say all that, one, to hopefully encourage you that we're all human. We all have bad days, bad weeks, bad months, maybe bad quarters. The idea is not that we perfect our life in a way that we don't experience those things. That's not real life. Like that's an artificial fantasy that is so unrealistic that it creates so much distortion in our world. And I think it really causes a lot of contention in our own lives. Like we're trying to achieve a state that doesn't exist when really we could just benefit so much from understanding that while we might not be okay, and we're going to go through seasons where we're really not okay, it's okay that we might be there, but we have to do something to get ourselves out of it. So rather than worrying about what might not be okay and what might turn into things that aren't okay, like rather than worrying about the what if, Start to focus on building the tools that can help you to rebalance yourself, to really come back to life, to move back into the state of thriving, to healthify your mind, body, and soul so that you don't have to stay in those places. And honestly, that is why I bring up this whole conversation. It's because I did create those tools and they have worked to help move me forward to give me desire and motivation and excitement for life again, even if I didn't feel it for a brief moment of time. And ultimately to rename what I would never have named a break in the past, a true break and recognizing in my gentleness for myself, that is exactly what needed to happen in order to help me move into a better place. Okay, I am just rambling at this point, but don't forget to head to thelivingwell.com and check out the blog post today where I show you my daily life rhythms that are really working. And in the next podcast, I'm gonna break down those five disciplines that have changed my marriage, my relationship with God, and myself. Because truthfully, I have struggled greatly with all three and I really needed to work on them. So come back in the next podcast as we break that down. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that you will share this episode with your friends and family, especially if you loved it and found it valuable. Just take a screenshot, send it to a friend. It means the world to me. It is literally how this show exists and how it grows, and other people can come to find it and join our community of people who are determined to live in health. Okay, that is it, and I'll see you back here next week with those five disciplines. 